So in this video, we'll take a detour and talk about why CMOS works, why it gives us the outputs and the behavior that we get from it. And we will discover that there's one thing about CMOS that really matters. So let's first start by uh, taking this logic function, uh, uh, f equals ab plus c into d plus e all bar and implement it. It would be an exercise as well as the start of this problem. So um, looking at the expression of f bar, it's ab plus c into d plus e. Implementing this in the pull down network, we get a, a branch with ab and another branch with c and then d and e are parallel with each other. And then uh, when we implement the pull up network, we'll have two blocks, one corresponding to a and b and another corresponding to the rest of the network. And the rest of the network consists of C now appearing in, in parallel with uh, D and E, which are in series with each other. So D and E are in series with each other. Uh, as always, make sure you have the same number of PMOS transistors in the pull-up network as you have uh, NMOS transistors in the pull-down network, and you will get F at the output node. And the question is, what is V out corresponding uh, to this uh, f uh, for, for all the input values given, uh, the input combinations given in this table. The truth table for this function is going to be 32 uh, rows long, so we will only look at select cases and uh, consider the outputs in all of these cases. We want to find the value of Vout, we want to find the value of total current flowing through the circuit from supply to ground, and we also want to find out uh, something called path to ground and path to VDD. It's basically the number of paths connecting the output node to ground and the number of paths connecting the output node to supply for each of the input cases. So let's take uh, the all ones input case first. And when we have all ones, basically the entire pull up network is going to be cut off. And so the pull up network is going to be entirely off and the pull down network is going to be entirely on. And so we have everything in the pull down network is on and everything in the pull up network is off. Now we have a rather complica complicated set of transistors in the pull-down pull network, which are on. Uh, a and B are series with each other, and then they are parallel to something else, and that something else is. But we can reduce all of these transistors to a single transistor because they all have the same inputs to their gates. And so uh, using parallel and series reductions, we can reduce these transistors into a single NMOS transistor whose k can, can be calculated, but so far it is not uh, important, but we can calculate it. And then the question is, what is V out in this case? And since we have a single transistor that is on, um, then the output will be uh, simply ground, it will be zero volt, regardless of the size of the transistor. The current flowing is null because the pull-up network is cut off and thus it cuts off the path to VDD and therefore there is no uh, current flowing between supply and ground. And so V output in this case is zero volt. The number, uh, the uh, current flowing is zero. If we look at uh, the pull up network, it's completely cut off and therefore there are no path available to the supply. There are zero path available to the supply. If we look at the uh, number of path available to ground, so the output node is connected to ground in this case through three paths, uh, the path through AB and the path through CD and the path through CE. And so we have three paths to ground. Let's look at um, the uh, next case, which is 11011. So if we look at 11011, we find that the, these two NMOS transistors are on, and then the, this tra NMOS transistor is cut off, MNC is cut off. And therefore, the branch containing C and D and E is not going to contribute anything. It does not connect the output node to ground. The output node is connected to ground instead only through the branch containing A and B. But now the branch containing A and B is going to be connected to ground and we have to find out what's happening in the pull-up network. Because if the pull-up network also has a path available to supply, then we have to solve the problem. If it doesn't, then the current flowing is zero and therefore the V output in this case is going to be zero because we can reduce these two series transistors into a single transistor. So let's look at what's happening in the pull-up network. In the pull-up network, transistors uh, A and B are going to be cut off because their inputs are one. 
And that's enough for us, because as long as transistors A and B are cut off, then it really doesn't matter what's happening in transistors C, D, and E, just simply because there is no path to VDD, and therefore the current is equal to zero. And so in this case, the current is equal to zero. The number of paths to VDD is zero because transistors a and B in the pull-up network are cutting the path to supply. There's only one path to ground through A and B, and the output is zero volt. So if you look at the input um, um, 11011, we will find that the input 110, uh, uh, sorry, the input 11001, we'll find out that the input 11001 uh, is no different from the case before it, because all that's happening is that transistors A and B are on, transistors C and D are cut off in the pull-down network. It really doesn't matter if D is cut off or if it is on, as long as C is cut off. And therefore, everything that we did for the case before applies here. The output is zero volt, the number of path to ground is one, the number of path to supply is zero, and the current flowing is zero. Also, if we have one, one, zero, one, zero, then all the difference would be in, in the fact that transistor E is now cut off instead of transistor D. And again, it doesn't matter because it doesn't change the number of path to ground. The number of path to ground is one, the number of path to VDD is zero, current flowing is zero, and the output is zero volt. So now let's look at um, the, uh, the case where we have um, uh, input 01110. When we have 01110, we can um, reduce the network as follows. So we have 01, let's first get the uh, schematic ready. So we're making space. So 0, 1 means that M and A is cut off, but M and B is on. Uh, 1, 1, 0 means that C and D are on, but E is off. And in the pull-up network, 0, 1 means that A is on, B is off. 1, 1, 0 means that C is off, and D is off, but E is on. So if we look at this case, we find that there is only a single path to ground, and that path is through C and D. There are no paths to VDD because there's always a cutoff transistor along the way, either B, C, or D. And therefore, the current flowing is zero, and therefore, through the single path to ground, the output will be zero volt. If we look at the case 10110, it is exactly the same case, except that in this case, transistor B is cut off in the pull-down network instead of transistor A. If we look at the case um, 11110, on the other hand, we will find that we have two paths to ground. These two paths are available through transistors A and B and through transistors C and D. So we have uh, two paths available to ground. Uh, if, pull, if we look at the pull-up pull -up network, on the other hand, we will find that um, transistors A and B are cut off in this case, which mean, means that there's no need, really no need to look at the rest of the pull-up pull network. And so we have two paths available uh, to ground, zero path available to VDD, zero current flowing, and the output is zero volt. Now, let's move on to uh, new cases where, uh, for example, the input is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So let's look at this input case, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And let's again clear the image so that we can mark which transistors are on and which are off. So we have 0, 1, which means that A is cut off, B is on. 0, 1, 1, which means that C is cut off, D and E are on. In the pull-up network, if you look, A is on, B is off, C is on, D and E are off. So if you look at the pull-down network, there are zero paths available to ground in the pull-down network. And in fact, there, are, uh, there is zero current flowing because of this. If you look at the pull-up network, you have one path available to VDD, which is through transistors C and A. The two transistors can be reduced into a single transistor, causing a short circuit between the output node and supply. Let's look at another input case. Let's look, at, for example, at 0, um, zero 1, zero, 0, So if you look at this input case, the uh, transistors will be in the pull-down network, a will be cut off, B will be cut off, C will be on, D and E will be cut off. If we look at the pull-up network, A will be on, 
B will be on, C will be off, D and E will be on. So we have zero path available to ground, again. We have two paths available to VDD, through A, D and E, and through B, D and E. The current flowing is zero because the pull-down network is cut off, and the output will be VDD. If you look at the truth table, and if we continue to find other input cases, you will discover that the only thing that is, that is in common between all the uh, rows of the truth table is that the current flowing is zero. Why is the current equal to zero in each row of the truth table? The current is equal to zero because whenever you find that there is at least one non-zero uh, uh, one uh, path available to supply, you'll find that there will be zero path available to ground. And when there, when there is at least one path available to ground, there will be zero path available to supply. And so if you look at this, at this case, there's at least one path available to ground. There will always be a zero path available to supply and vice versa. This is what makes sure that there is zero current flowing. On the other hand, if you had a case where you had a path available to supply like this, doesn't really matter through how many transistors and one or more path available to ground like this. Again, it doesn't really matter uh, through how many transistors. This means that there is a path available between supply and ground because there are paths open to both. Now, this means that the output voltage at the output node will neither be supply nor ground. Instead, it will be an intermediate value uh, that can be found by finding the equivalent resistance for pull up and the equivalent resistance for pull down and doing a voltage divider between them. Actually, this is very reminiscent of ratioed logic. It is exactly what happened in ratioed logic. We had a path open from supply to ground, causing the drawing of steady state current. This steady state current led to a, a potential divider between the driver, which in this case would be the pull down, and the load, which in this case would be the pull up. This is not proper CMOS operation. Proper CMOS operation says, if there's a path available to supply, there has to be an open circuit on uh, the pull-down network, there have to be no path available to ground. This guarantees there is zero current flowing in the entire network and allows the pull-up network to short the output to supply. And the opposite also is also true. If you have a path available to ground, there have to be zero path available to supply in the pull-up network, which causes the total current drawn in the network to be null and allows the pull-down network to short the output node to ground. So what does this? Like how how is this guaranteed? Like, what guarantees that opening a, a path to ground shuts down all path to supply and vice versa? What guarantees this is the uh, complementary connections between the pull-up network and the pull-down network, combined with the fact that PMOSs operate uh, on zero volt and NMOSs operate on supply. This guarantees that this feature of CMOS will always be observed. For example, Examine this network. The transistor A corresponding to input A is appears in parallel with B and C in the pull-down network. This means that when A is equal to 1, equal to VDD, transistor M and A will always be on and will always provide a path to ground. This necessitates that A in the pull-up network appear in series with everything else. Since it appears in parallel with everything else in the pull-down network, this means that it we don't really care about the, in, the values of anything else when A is equal to 1 in the pull-down network, which means that if A is equal to 1 in the pull-up network, A has to be able to cut the path to VDD regardless of the input values of everything else. So what guarantees that the proper operation of CMOS happens? It is the complementary connections. So CMOS has to provide outputs that are 0 volt or VDD, this happens because there is zero steady state current in the network and there is a path open only to supply or VDD. What guarantees that this happens? The complementary connections. If you ever find yourself dealing with a case like this in a CMOS network, know that you have implemented the gate in a wrong fashion.